Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have a renewal process that is defined on the non-negative real axis. We have points that occur randomly. These are also called events or arrivals or renewals. The inter-arrival times are these random variables. In a renewal process, they are independent and identically distributed. I will assume here that the inter-arrival time is an absolutely continuous random variable with PDF small f and CDF capital F, the Laplace transform of the PDF, which is the expectation of e to the minus s u, is denoted by phi u of s. The real part of s is greater than zero. Because the CDF is the integral of the PDF, the Laplace transform of the CDF function is phi divided by s. N of t is the number of points that we have on the interval from zero to t, t included. N of zero is equal to zero. In this figure, if this instant is t tilde, then n of t tilde is equal to three, because from zero to t tilde, we have these three arrivals or points. In this video, we are interested in the correlation function of a renewal process. Specifically, we are interested in the expectation of n of t, n of t plus s, where t and s are positive. Let's start our investigation by obtaining the first moment of n of t, denoted here by small m of t, and called the renewal function. To obtain the expected value of n of t, we apply the law of total expectations. We integrate the conditional expectation of n of t, given that the time of the first point or the first arrival is alpha. We multiply by f of alpha and integrate from zero to infinity. This integral can be split into two integrals, one from zero to t, and the other from t to infinity. Note that in this integral, alpha, which is the time of the first arrival, is greater than t. If alpha is the time of the first arrival, and we inspect the renewal process at a time t that is strictly less than alpha, then n of t is equal to zero. This conditional expectation is equal to zero, and this integral is equal to zero. The first moment, or the renewal function, is the integral alpha from zero to t, of the conditional expectation of n of t, given that the first arrival is at time alpha, multiplied by the probability density function of the inter-arrival time. In this integral, alpha is less than t. The first arrival occurs at the time alpha. So what is n of t? n of t is equal to 1, which is this first arrival occurring at the time instant alpha. Note that the inter-arrival times are iid, which means that once we have the first arrival, we can imagine that the process is reset. The process starts anew. What we will get at time t is n of t minus alpha plus this arrival that has occurred at alpha. n of t is 1 plus n of t minus alpha. If we take the expectation, we get 1 plus the expected value of n of t minus alpha. That's 1 plus m of t minus alpha. So this integral can be written as integral alpha from 0 to t, f of alpha, plus integral alpha from 0 to t, m of t minus alpha, f of alpha. This is the convolution of the renewal function m of t and the probability density function of the inter-arrival time. And this integral here is the CDF of the inter-arrival time. We now have this result, that the first moment of n of t, the renewal function, is equal to the CDF of the inter-arrival time plus the convolution of m of t and the BDF of the inter-arrival time. If we take the Laplace transform of both sides, let's denote the Laplace transform of m of t as big M of s. We have m of s equal to phi over s, plus the product of m of s and phi of s. The Laplace transform of a convolution is the product of the Laplace transforms. We can move this to the left-hand side to obtain that m of s times 1 minus phi is equal to 1 over s times phi of s. Dividing both sides by 1 minus phi, we get that m of s is 1 over s phi over 1 minus phi. Recall that phi of s is the expectation of e to the minus s u, we are assuming here that u is positive with probability 1 and that the real part of s is greater than 0. And so the magnitude of phi u of s is less than 1. Now consider a more general problem in which we have an unknown function g of t equal to a known function h of t plus the convolution of g of t and the inter-arrival pdf. This is an integral equation. We have g of t equal to h of t plus integral alpha from 0 to t, g of t minus alpha, f u of alpha. We want to solve for g, we can use the Laplace transform. Taking the Laplace transform of both sides, we get that g of s is h of s plus g of s times phi of s. Moving this to the left-hand side and dividing by 1 minus phi of s, we get that g of s is h of s, which is known because we know h of t over 1 minus phi of s. h of s is multiplied by 1. We can write this one as 1 minus phi plus phi. 
h of s times 1 minus phi over 1 minus phi. That's h of s. We also have h of s times phi over 1 minus phi. From this expression here, this ratio is s m of s. If we take the inverse Laplace transform, g of s becomes g of t, h of s becomes h of t, which is a known function. We have a product here, which is convolution in the time domain, h of s becomes h of t. Then we have the inverse Laplace transform of s m of s. If the Laplace transform of m of t is m of s, then the Laplace transform of the first derivative of m of t is s m of s minus small m of zero, which is equal to the expectation of n of zero. We take this to be zero, so this expectation is zero, and we have the Laplace transform of the first derivative of m of t equal to s m of s. In other words, the inverse Laplace transform of this part is the first derivative of the renewal function, which is the first moment of the counting process n of t. Our focus here is the expectation of n of t times n of t plus s, where t and s are positive. This is a function of two variables, t and s. Let's denote it by a psi of t and s. We use, again, the same trick of conditioning on the time of the first arrival. In other words, we write down this expectation as the conditional expectation of n of t times n of t plus s, given that the time of the first event or point is alpha, we multiply the conditional expectation by the BDF of the inter-arrival time and integrate from 0 to infinity. This integral can be split into an integral from 0 to t and another integral from t to infinity. If the first arrival occurs at a time that is greater than t, then n of t is equal to 0. And this expectation is equal to 0. Consequently, we can just integrate from 0 to t. What is n of t if alpha is less than t? Again, we have an arrival at time alpha. That's 1. And then we need to count the number of arrivals from alpha to t. That's n of t minus alpha. n of t plus s is the same two terms, but n of t minus alpha is replaced by n of t plus s minus alpha. When we multiply, we get four terms, 1 plus n of t minus alpha plus n of t plus s minus alpha plus n of t minus alpha n of t plus s minus alpha. Applying the expectation, we have 1 plus small m of t minus alpha plus a small m of t plus s minus alpha. And then we have the expectation of this product which is exactly function epsi. Its first argument is t minus alpha. The second argument, which is the difference between these two arguments, is t plus s minus alpha minus between brackets t minus alpha, that's s. We can write down this integral as the sum of four terms. We have the integral of the BDF from 0 to t, that's the CDF, big F of t. Then we have the convolution of m and the BDF. Then the convolution of m of t plus s and the BDF the last term is the convolution between the function epsilon t and s and the BDF of the inter-arrival time. From the first page, we have that the renewal function is equal to the CDF plus the convolution of the renewal function and the BDF. So these two terms can be combined as small m of t. Then we have this convolution and that one. The sum of these three terms is epsilon of t and s. If we look carefully here, we have an integral equation like that one on the first page. We have the correlation function of the renewal process. This is what we want to obtain. It appears here on the left-hand side. It appears on the right-hand side convolved with the PDF of the inter-arrival time. We also have this function, which is known. It is assumed that we know the inter-arrival time, and from that, we can obtain the renewal function or the first moment of n of t. We know now that the solution to this integral equation is epsi of t and s equal to this known function plus the convolution of this function and the first derivative of the renewal function. Let's assume that convolution here is associative and we can write down the convolution of these three functions as m of t plus s, convolved with the result of the convolution between the PDF and the first derivative of the renewal function. We can rewrite this convolution as the difference between the first derivative of the renewal function and the PDF. This is obtained by writing down this expression of m of t, taking the Laplace transform. This is what we have, and this is what was used on the first page to write down m of s in terms of phi. Multiply both sides by s. We have s m of s equal to phi plus phi times s m of s. If we take the inverse Laplace transform, we obtain that the first derivative of the renewal function is the PDF plus the convolution between the PDF and the first derivative of the renewal function. This means that this convolution, which appears here, can be written as the first derivative of the renewal function minus the BDF. When we do this, we get the convolution between m of t plus s and the BDF with a minus sign. We have the same convolution, but with a plus sign, 
these two terms go away and we end up with three terms, the renewal function m of t, the convolution between m of t and its first derivative with respect to time. Finally, we have the convolution between m of t plus s and the first derivative of the renewal function. This can be written as integral alpha from zero to t, the first derivative of the renewal function evaluated at alpha times one plus m of t minus alpha plus m of t plus s minus alpha. At a special case, if we have a Poisson random process, it is a renewal process in which the inter-arrival time is exponential lambda. In this case, n of t is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda t. The probability that n of t is equal to n is lambda t to the power n e to the minus lambda t divided by n factorial. The first moment of n of t is lambda t. So in the case of a Poisson random process, we have m of alpha equal to lambda alpha, and the first derivative is the constant lambda. If we want to evaluate this integral to obtain the correlation function, we have the constant lambda, which can be taken outside, then integral from zero to t, one plus lambda of t minus alpha plus lambda of t plus s minus alpha. The integrand is one plus two lambda t plus lambda s minus two lambda alpha. If we integrate with respect to alpha from zero to t, this part gets multiplied by t, and we have a lambda here. These three terms give us lambda t plus two lambda squared t squared plus lambda squared ts. When we integrate this, we get minus lambda alpha squared. Using the limits of integration, we get minus lambda t squared times lambda, that's minus lambda squared t squared. The correlation function of a Poisson random process is lambda t plus lambda squared t squared plus lambda squared ts. That's lambda t plus lambda t times t plus s.